We have been blessed with the opportunity to speak with the wonderful celebrity mom, Evangelist Beverly Broaddus Green. She's the mom of Snoop Dogg, rapper and entertainer, and I want to thank her for joining us today. This is the amazing part about our journey. Mm -hmm. uh, before you were ordained as a, as a minister, an evangelist, talk about the birthing of your ministry. Tell us, uh, take us through that journey. Uh, this was like in uh, mm -hmm. 2004. I had an evangelist friend, and okay. uh, we got to talking. Yeah. And she said, you got a calling on your life. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I don't. She said, yes, you do. I said, well, what is the calling? She says, you're going to preach the word. I said, no, I'm not, because I want to kind of straddle a little bit, you know. Right. And I knew once I became an evangelist, I got to clean up. Exactly. And so she kept telling me this. Then I noticed I had been the president of the choir for 20 years. Wow. I directed the choir for 25 years. Okay. Okay. I was a superintendent of the youth department. So this is like all through the years, mm. you know, that, do, even though I was out there doing whatever, I still was growing, you know, and God was positioning me mm -hmm. to be who I am. Amen. And um, one day my choir hurted me so bad mm. and uh, I was going to step down and God said, no, not now. It's not the time. But that next, which was January the 9th, I got a good memory. January the 9th, 2005, when I walked in that church and all the choir members had on black mm -hmm. and I had on red. Mm -hmm. And nobody called me to tell me that they were wearing that. And I'm the president. Yeah. I was sick and didn't go to choir rehearsal. And God said, that's your time. And I stepped down. Right there. As a choir member, I stepped down. But I continued to go to church. And then April of 2005, which was Easter Sunday, okay. God says, time to tell your pastor. And I was walking down, get ready to go to the pulpit to tell my pastor. Mm -hmm. And when I told him, he grabbed my hand and said, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I left, and I was crying. And that next Sunday, he says, I want um, Sister Green to stand up. Right. And that's when he introduced me as an evangelist. And he lights on me right then and there. He said, she don't have to go and prove nothing. Her life is an open door. What you're talking about, um, domestic violence and those kinds of things, mm -hmm. what was the greatest adversity you, in those early stages of being 28, a young woman? What was your greatest adversity or struggle? Did you struggle with self-esteem at all? No. Um, it was kind of like mm -hmm. I was 18 when I moved out. Okay. And I moved in, me and my first husband, and we, he would let me drink, but right. when I get to drinking, uh -huh. that mouth get to running. Oh. And I wasn't about to let him tell me to be quiet. So that's when the fighting okay. would start. Gotcha. And um, it seemed like after him, every man that I met, mm -hmm. for some reason, they liked to fight. So they taught me how to fight, okay? Oh. They weren't going to hit me, and I didn't hit them back. Okay, Amen. and like down through the year, I don't think it was my self-esteem. I just think that think? I wanted my freedom. Okay, I wanted to be free because it was like my mom sheltered me all that time, and I, I guess I was looking for love, but I was looking for it all in the wrong places. places. And then it just took me back to when I was being raised mm -hmm. because my father used to beat my mom okay. until one day her mother told her what to do. Right. And she went there and almost killed my daddy, you know, like, you know, I broke his jawbone and wow. threw grease on him and all that. And so okay. all that started coming back to me. Mm -hmm. And then I started retaliating. Mm -hmm. You hit me, I'm going to hit you back. Yeah. And then I said, you know what, it's, it's something wrong with this picture. Mm -hmm. You know, you keep meeting these guys and they're drinking and they own drugs and right. stuff. This is not the kind of life that God really has for you. Yeah. And I just made my mind up one day and the year of 2000 okay. when I walked away from that third marriage. Amen. That was it. That was it. That was it. And All then right. God blessed me in 2001 to meet my king and we got married and we were married for four years wow. and then he passed away. Then he passed away. Yes. The, hey, best. the best. The best. The best. Never put his hands on me. Always, he treated me like I'm the woman the that I am. The queen you are. That's right. Amen. And so I just don't want no woman to be in no relationship. That's if it. a man hits you once, he'll hit you again. He hit you again. You know, so don't allow him to get him one way or the other. Amen. Let him go to sleep and get him. That's no. right. <laughs> Y'all heard that. Don't do it, Ben Green. Don't do it. Now you've written this book called Real Love 2. Tell us about that. Okay, Real Love 2 started back, I should say, Real Love 1. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, actually, July of 2001. Okay. And I had came back home. We had been, me and my husband had been to Texas. Okay. And uh, we were talking about the things I can remember uh -huh. from kindergarten okay. all the way to the sixth grade. I remember every one of my teachers. 
and my son says, the youngest one said, Mom, I graduated in 97, and I can't remember none of my teachers. Oh. And he said, you ought to write a book. And I was like, for what? Because you got a story to tell. I said, I'll think about it. So about a month later, mm -hmm. we start, I start doing the book, book and everything. And what it does, it takes you all the, back, all the way back to when I was five years old. Okay. And I was sitting on the stage, and I, got, I graduated mm. from kindergarten to first grade. Okay. And as I'm sitting there, I, Snoop invited me to one of his shows. Okay. And as I'm sitting there in the audience, my mind takes me all the way back. To when I was five years old. Wow. And I seen him as my baby. I seen him as he was growing. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited because this is my first time seeing him actually on stage. Right. So he comes out on stage in a, in a 60, maybe a 62 Chevrolet or something like that. He came out on the stage in wow. his car. Okay. And then he got the rapping and everything. I was like, I can't believe this. My son doing this. And so my mind, I start going down memory lane. Right. And as I went down memory lane, I took myself back mm -hmm. to being a little girl, how I met his dad yeah. when I was like seven years old, yeah. which was like my first love. Mm -hmm. And how we moved to California, mm -hmm. but we always stayed in touch with our family back home. Right. And as time would permit me, it took me, just kept on writing and kept on writing. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I tell you, I started looking for love yes. in all the wrong places. And I love my mom mm -hmm. to death, but they never said, I love you. We just took it for granted that they loved us. So I was in these relationships looking for some men to say, you know, I love you. Yeah. And not the fighting and all that. And the book just go on and on. And then finally, uh -huh. I meet, I met uh, my fiance and we got married November 24, 2001 and it was a fairy tale wedding because everybody in Long Beach wanted to come because they knew Snoop was giving me away. Okay. And, um, wow. and my, all my sons walked me in and all my grandbabies carried my train and it was just Beautiful. wonderful and I said I lived happily ever after but didn't know four years later he was going to be gone. Four so years. yeah, so I picked my story up, meeting him, okay, and how would uh, how good he was to me because we always was on the honeymoon, yeah, and just talking about how God, you know, called me as an evangelist, and I seen God change this man before my faith and stop drinking, join church, and how he laid on the floor, and he had told me the night before if I die, I want to go to sleep and then wake up, and it's almost like that he had a massive heart attack laid on the floor and died. My Lord. And I tell you about my grieving, how you know, I want to let women know that when you lose your husband, yeah. you lose your mate or whatever, yeah, that there going. is there is life after yeah. that. And all this is in that book. Yes. And how God blessed me to give you 20 steps to real love, joy, peace, meditation, surrender, mm -hmm. trust, faith, hope, patience, and all of that, I break it down. Mm -hmm. And you can read it step by step, mm -hmm. by step by step. And to show you, if you apply those 20 steps to your life, God will do the same for you. He'll save you, sanctify you, and fill you with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And He will order your steps in His Word. He will guide your feet in His Word. He will wash your heart in His Word. Yes. But Because but He said a righteous man's steps yes. are ordered by Him. Amen. And so as long as you stay righteous and stay in the will of God, He'll bring you through. He'll bring you through. He'll take you all the way, honey.